Sudden openness and, of course, a newfound a sense of democracy in uh, Burma, also known as uh, Myanmar, is one of the more interesting stories uh, in the last uh, several months. Of course, many high-profile uh, visitors have uh, paid uh, you know, time in the country. And it is also a becoming more and more of a fertile investment ground, according to our next guest. Douglas Clayton is founder and CEO of Leopard Capital and joins us on the program. And, Douglas, welcome to the program. Uh, you're thinking of uh, going into the private equity space in Myanmar. Myanmar, you've already been uh, present in Cambodia uh, to the tune of about 34 million U.S. dollars, and you have public listed investments in private equity in Bangladesh. Very, very frontier markets here. How interesting is Myanmar, and how uh, fertile is, is it as a place? Myanmar will be one of the great investment stories of probably 2013. Mm -hmm. um, it's changing very rapidly now, um, but this is a country for 50 years that it missed out on the, the whole Asian miracle. Mm -hmm. It's going to catch up very rapidly um, as the reforms take take place. Right. Uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, have you have you done some initial scouting around in terms of you know what kind of deals you can do, what kind of contracts would be enforceable, and you know what kind of industries it would be? I understand that Myanmar is one of the most resource-rich nations, which the military juntas over the decades have completely squandered. I imagine that'd be a first uh, stopping point for you. Well, it, it's too early to invest today for, for most institutional investors. Everything is being changed. They have to change the foreign exchange regime, the uh, foreign investment code, and so on. Uh, but that's all in pl uh, um, underway now. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at Myanmar for what it will be soon rather than the way it is today. Mm -hmm. The opportunities there will be very similar to what we've been experiencing in Cambodia over the last five years. Mm -hmm. That basically they, they need the uh, essentials of, of life, electricity, power, internet, um, agricultural modernization, financial services. Mm -hmm. Hi there, it's, uh, it's Lisa over at the SGX. Talk to us about Bangladesh. I mean, it's not a market that many people track closely. Which sectors do you find interesting in that country and which instruments do, do you prefer to invest in? Bangladesh is a huge country, 170 million people. Um, it's one of the cheapest places to manufacture now. And as, as China gets more expensive, uh, factories are, are rapidly moving down into places like Bangladesh as well as Cambodia. Uh, but Bangladesh is much bigger. So we like export manufacturing where, where labor costs are essential. And secondly, the domestic market that's being created by this, this uh, urbanization and modern um, industrialization trend. Um, you can invest in Bangladesh either through the public equity market, they do have a stock market there, or through some private equity funds. We're starting to create one next. Yeah, Doug, uh, you know, this PE money that you put into places like Bangladesh, uh, Cambodia, and likely uh, Myanmar uh, come 2013, uh, uh, let, let's go right to the end. I mean, you're in this to make money. Let's talk about exits. I note here that you, uh, it's either through a trade sale or self-liquidating structures, and we can talk about that a little bit later. But, you know, in places like Bangladesh, like Cambodia, like Myanmar, uh, I assume it's going to be U.S. dollars going in, getting our money back out. I mean, these are places where, in the local currency, it's not exactly liquid. So how do you get around that? Each country has their own rules for repatriation. In Bangladesh's cases, the best way to get out is through to list a private company into the stock exchange and sell through the stock market. Uh, whereas in Cambodia or Laos or, some of the, or hopefully in Myanmar, um, you'll be able to exit through a trade sale to a, a multinational um, most Asian multinationals are trying to get into the frontier market space. Uh, for example, there's 35 banks in Cambodia. Um, almost all of them are international banks trying to expand in there. And there's 11 cell phone operators. Almost all are international. Yeah, so you're worried about the legal system in places like this, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the whole judicial system in places like this, you know, that's the great unknown, isn't it? I'd be very interested to know, you know, how much resources do you deploy into research around, you know, the judicial systems in these countries? And, you know, we've all seen examples before when all of a sudden governments have closed capital accounts and it's very difficult to get money out. Sure, and again, each country is different, but in reality, all of emerging Asia, from China to India to Vietnam to uh, most of the uh, ASEAN countries, the judicial system is not the strong point. You have to work around that. Um, the frontier markets, it's not necessarily that much worse than the emerging markets. In each case, it's very important to avoid problems by, by being local, by dealing with your investment partners and solving things before they get to uh, the, the worst case of a, a court situation. Doug, good having you on the show with us.